Hi everybody, welcome to ECE 113 Creative Art Movement and Expression. I'm so glad you're here. Um, I'd like to take a moment just to give out a few announcements. First of all, welcome to our, our new students. I've got um, several new students this session and I have several that are finishing their final course. So we're all on different paths at this time. Uh, for my new ones, be sure and read the syllabus and the course expectations on the ECE 113 course page. Uh, be sure you make your initial post, which I believe everyone did, uh, to the discussion boards by Wednesday at midnight. We have two this week and we have two most weeks. So uh, be sure you make that initial post by Wednesday at midnight and then reply to two classmates by Sunday at midnight. Um, and most of the other assignments are due by Sunday as well. So that's part of online learning and the flexibility of uh, being able to turn assignments in at midnight if needed. Um, also, if uh, you've been contacted by financial aid, uh, sometimes they'll send you an email or give you a phone call. Please be sure and get back to, with them. It's sometimes hard for them to connect with our online students since they don't come to campus. So be sure if they reach out to you that you get right back with them. Uh, one more announcement. Uh, for those of you that use Gmail, I think this is amazing if you've never used your Google Calendar. Um, you can use it to keep track of your assignments, and that's probably the hardest thing with online courses is staying organized and staying on top of your assignment because it's up to you. So if you use Gmail, um, if you'll look in the upper right-hand square of your, of your screen, you've got a little uh, icon that looks like a telephone pad almost. If you click on that, you'll have a number of options that will pop down, and one of these is calendar right there in the middle. So if you use this digital calendar, you can click on any date, add whatever you're wanting to add, maybe post initial discussion board posting or finish Pinterest assignment, whatever you need to keep track of, put that on your calendar and then it will send you a reminder to your Gmail. So it's a great option that a lot of people don't know about. Um, and sorry about that, our course will not <laughs> go until June 12th. That's from a previous course. We, we are actually going into January for ours. Whoops. Next, our student question of the week. Um, this is a great question because I have several people getting ready to start externship. Um, with your externship, when you get your on-ground experience in your daycares, uh, you want to contact uh, Amber Smith and Career Services. She is our Career Service uh, rep specifically for ECE. So contact her about four to six weeks before your externship should start. She has all the paperwork for you. She has the, all the information going. She'll have you attend a class that's called um, Externship 101. And you can either come to campus to do that or she'll do a phone call with you one-on-one uh, -on -one if you're unable to make it to campus to make it more flexible for our online students. So about four to six weeks before your scheduled externship, be sure and contact Amber and we'll get the ball rolling on that. So today we're going to go a little bit over uh, chapter two, understanding play, so important. It's important in developmentally appropriate practices, and those of you that are new just know that we typically um, abbreviate developmentally appropriate practice as DAP, D-A-P. So if you see that, you know what we're talking about. Here's a few examples of uh, children at play. We've got kids outside doing some form of ring around the rosy probably i'm not sure if, that, if they sing that song anymore and then down here we've got uh, at a nice sand table we've got children with dinosaurs and cups and and we know the importance of playing in sand playing in water and ece so great looking kiddos what is play play first of all is pleasurable it's fun and when we're having fun we learn more even as adults it's self-selected when we when we specify play that means it wasn't set up by the teacher they didn't tell them exactly what to do there were no specific rules for how they're going to play at this playground it means they're picking what they want to do and kind of how they want to do it it's intrinsically motivated it's spontaneous they're interested in the swings or they're interested in playing in the dirt or they are interested in playing in the dress-up area wherever it might be 
it's also non-literal or symbolic so it can be goofy crazy silly and that makes it even better it actively engages the children and if you'll think about assignments that you've done um, maybe when you were in grade school you'll realize that the the crazy ones are the ones that you remember the ones that were really fun uh, the ones that were maybe really shocking those are the ones you remember. You don't remember those worksheets from day to day. That doesn't really stand out. So it actively engages the children and it encourages attention to the means, not the end. So play in itself is a purpose. Let's look real quick at the categories of play. So we have functional play, which is sensory motor or practice play. That can be blocks, puzzles, climbing, skating. So these all have a function and use muscles, whether it be fine motor skills or large motor skills. We have symbolic play. So constructive dramatic play, paints, creativity, dress up, clay or play-doh, Legos, all those would be considered symbolic. And then we have games with rules and um, you know, fairly complex rules. So this is really set aside for older, early childhood children. So, so school age or maybe second, third grade. We get into kickball, checkers, little league, rules that they have to learn and use. So those are the different categories of play. Here are a few of the social stages of play. And we've actually talked about this in a previous course. However, we're just gonna go over it really quick for our, for our new students and as a refresher. So you have onlooker play, which is where a child basically just watches another child play. So if you look at this picture right here, you've got a kiddo on the left, and he's watching the kiddo on the right pour sand um, into the sand play instrument. So he's really just watching what the other child's doing. So that's onlooker play. They're not being a part of it. And um, there's also solitary play where they basically just play by themselves with whatever game they're wanting to use or toy or uh, playground in, uh, playground area they want to play in. Solitary play. Parallel play, I know it sounds like they'd be playing together, but they're not. Parallel play is where they're playing side by side, but not together. So think of railroad tracks, they run side by side. So in this instance, if we look at this picture again, if this child were also playing in the sand, um, then it would be considered parallel play. But in this instance, he's just watching, therefore it's onlooker. Next we have associative group play. So uh, they're starting to play together, maybe as a group, um, and maybe uh, doing similar things. Let's say we're in a dress up uh, center and everybody's putting on costumes. That might be a type of associative play. But if we take it a step further into D, cooperative play, that's where everybody's putting on costumes and each person has a role to play. Maybe one's being the mom or the dad or the baby or the grandma or the grandpa and they have rules and they're working together. So that is cooperative play. And it's important that you can kind of recognize these different types of play in children. So how does play um, go along with a developmentally appropriate curriculum. First of all, it provides for all areas of the child's development. Think about that. They're talking, they're moving, they're solving problems. There's so much that goes into play. It emphasizes learning as an active, interactive process, and we know from studies that we learn better by doing not just by hearing. So play is a great time um, to pick up things in the real world, basically. It presents highly motivated opportunities for learning because they're excited. We want them to be excited. Allows for differences in developmental ability, interest, and learning style because we're all on different roads there. Allows for practice and repetition of skills and ideas 
and it promotes self-regulation. So play isn't just silly stuff, working, being on the playground, running around, acting crazy. It is all of these things, and it is so important. Play is often talked about as if it were a relief from serious learning. But for children, play is serious learning. Play is really the work of childhood, and that's by Fred Rogers um, from Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood from back in the day. So re really think about that. Consider play is really the work of childhood. Conditions that support play are having a good physical environment, whether that's the classroom setup or the playground setup, or maybe you have a park nearby that can be utilized. So we need to have a good physical environment that is, allows every child to engage. No, depend, uh, no, no difference on their physical attributes, on uh, possi possible uh, disabilities. We want the child that's um, in a wheelchair to be able to play outside on that playground just as much as the one that can run around. We want real world experiences. So uh, a great example of that is the dress up area. They love that and playing house. Um, but also I've seen a lot of musical instruments that have been incorporated into playgrounds um, that give that real world musician feel. Um, and also art areas that are great um, on the outside with chalk and paint, et cetera. So things that they can actually experience. And with, uh, teacher intervention, this wants to be, uh, this needs to be fairly minimal. So helping children plan and organize the play. So you're sort of setting the stage for them and then letting them loose. Um, promoting, uh, prompting to add new ideas as you, as you see an interest in your children in your classroom, maybe adding that to the classroom to help support that play. Modeling to demonstrate behaviors. So maybe as the children are playing, you play by them using that tool or using that area in a way that might be different from how they're doing it. So you're not telling them to do it this way. You're just modeling and giving them an example of maybe a new way to play in the sand. And also by providing appropriate props for, um, for that area. So you're, you're setting the stage there. Issues involving play. Um, sometimes we might have problems with violent play, too rough, uh, children getting hurt, and this is where we have to have good rules for play. There may be cultural influences on play. So maybe in one culture it's okay to do this, but in another it's not. We have to be sensitive to those and try to guide children in the right direction. Play for children with special needs. I mentioned there's some amazing special needs playgrounds being designed. And um, I think we're paying more and more attention to this because we have to. Very important. Um, play and learning standards. Again, kind of go back to the rules. Helping families understand the power of play. So we don't want our families to think, well, they're just playing. They're not learning anything. Oh, they're learning tons. So we need to be able to convey the importance of all the things that they're learning to do in play. And we might do this with a newsletter that goes home. We might do this with a a board in our classroom that talks about uh, the qualities of play, the things that are being learned. So we want to pass along that information. Play is the highest form of research, Albert Einstein. I love this one as well. So consider that. It's not just play, okay? And lastly, questions. If you have any questions, um, please send me an email, Facebook me, call me, get in touch with me. I'd be glad to help um, help you sort out uh, maybe a question about an assignment or a discussion board or something from the lecture. Um, I, I have an open door policy. Even though you're probably not going to come to campus, that's okay. Contact me. All right. I hope you guys have a good rest of the week. And I will see you next week. Bye-bye.